training video is about these guys. You remember this? So they used this little guy in a huge medical breakthrough. In this video, I'm going to show you the device that they actually used, which was basically a fidget spinner to detect infections. That is just absolutely crazy and fascinating to me. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, let me start out with this. We all know that detecting bacteria now has become super easy. It's like swab, plate, spread, boom. A couple days, couple hours later, you have colonies that are growing, you count them, and you know what bacteria it is. Super easy, right? But have you heard of anyone detecting bacteria with a fidget spinner? I know, right? Pretty cool. Now, when I say bacterial infections, think of food poisoning, skin diseases, infectious diseases, because that's exactly what I'm talking about. If you've ever had a bacterial infection in the past, the doctor probably prescribes you some sort of antibiotics and then takes a swab sample, which is sent to the lab. A few days later, they process it in the lab where they culture it, they plate it, they grow the bacteria, confirm what type of infection it is, and then they either adjust your medication or be like, yeah, fine, this is what it is, this is the right stuff that we gave you, and it should subside soon. Now, bacterial culturing has been used for decades now, and we have huge amounts of past research which shows that this is an absolutely reliable way to detect bacteria. When an infection sample is sent to the lab to process, it takes generally 24 to 48 hours. Why? Because a test sample doesn't contain enough cells to detect an infection. So it's sent to the lab to allow the cells to grow. If there's an infection, the infected cells will multiply and that's how the bacterial infection is detected. As a patient, bacterial infections usually cause mild symptoms which can cause mild discomfort. But it's important to catch them early on so that the right antibiotics can be given before this infection spreads and can lead to scary things like organ failure. That's the last thing that we want. Now the reason I bring up bacterial infections in this video is because recently, just last week, there was a study published where scientists used a fidget spinner, this guy right over here, to make a device which would detect bacterial infections successfully, removing the need to actually send a sample to the lab and wait those 24 to 48 hours to get an answer. So the fidget spinner technology uses a very low sample volume and an enrichment step which allows us to detect the bacteria in just a couple minutes, basically having the entire process last just under three hours. Now the idea is a device like this can not only speed up testing, but it can also be used in rural areas in the world which don't have access to labs. So this study wasn't the first one where they used biosensors to complete an entire reaction on a chip. There is a lot of research that's going on out there which does this, but here's why this particular study caught my attention. The fact that this device was inspired out of a fidget spinner was absolutely genius. One, the fidget spinner-like device maintains biosensor integrity, which means that it has closed walls, it makes sure that the reaction can actually take place on the device itself. Second, this fidget spinner-like motion, what this does is it incorporates kinetic energy, which is basically movement enough to mix the sample on the chip, allowing the reaction to occur perfectly. So this particular study took 39 participants with suspected UT infections from India to do field testing with the fidget bio spinner. That's what I'm calling it because it's really cool. Here's how the device looks in action. You first load a buffer which allows proper mixing with the sample, after which you load the sample with the syringe. Pretty straightforward. You spin the device like a fidget spinner and then you remove that buffer that you initially added, put the loading reagent, which I'm guessing is like an enrichment step that they're doing here, and there you go. You have your results, which basically give you the extent of infection as well as the bacterial detection. Surprisingly enough, this fidget bio spinner is estimated just to be 48 cents. That's super cheap. Overall, the results of this bio fidget spinner was a breakthrough technology, especially for detecting UT infections in a setting where resources were limited. With this amazing start, I think it would be really cool if this technology could be used to detect different types of infections, which basically means detect different types of bacteria, as well as its capabilities of detecting small levels of infections. Overall, I thought it was a really cool technology and I wanted to share it with you guys. I hope you guys found it really cool too. If you do like these kind of videos, let me know in the comments below and I'll potentially think of making a whole series out of it. I love these kinds of research and this really just fascinates me all over. I'm a bioengineer, so obviously I'm gonna nerd out a little bit on all of this stuff, but that's just me. I'm potentially thinking of putting something on the wall here. 
I don't know, it kind of looks blank. I'm still working on the aesthetics and how I want this area to look, but do you like it? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, if you stick around till the end, I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys are staying safe wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next week with a new video. Until then, subscribe, share this video, share it around. I mean, this is pretty cool technology. Come on, a fidget spinner in medicine, that is pretty cool. Share this video with your family and friends. Like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.